Alright, Lynn here with another video, and today I will be doing kind of a follow-up video on the setup video I had previously. Um, if you didn't go ahead, if you didn't watch it already, I'll try to put a card or a link or something somewhere right here, uh, or you can go check the video description. But uh, today I will be doing a network tour of what I have currently, and then uh, trying to tell y'all future upgrades I have coming and what I have planned for not only the network but my server and everything so I'll go ahead and just show y'all the components of what I have on the screen and uh, tell y'all what I have going on in uh, the networking not about the server but just the network uh, part of it, portion of it so um, go ahead and show y'all that and then we'll move on to the server go ahead and show y'all the load balancing router I have which is the TP-Link TLR80T I have two ISP connections from CenturyLink and I use this to combine them I understand what a load balancer is for all the networking people but virtually the programs that matter most to me is balancing out for one all the traffic between both of them and when downloading games, it will, uh, the way that uh, downloading games work, at least for Steam and Origin, um, it balances it between the two connections. So I'm able to get, well, the combined double speed of both connections. Uh, this is the router that we have. It is a nicer router, but nothing especially some of the new, newer stuff coming out nothing super fancy now this I uh, picked up very recently and this is a 48 port Nortel gigabit switch <clears throat> I've been w looking for a switch not necessarily managed but a switch period for the network now to go ahead I will be showing you these in just a second but in like in my hands but in Right here, I got two Xeon E65 uh, CPUs. Now, these are, I believe, Nehalem-based. I don't know if that's the exact name, but they were be before Sandy Bridge. So, they are decently older CPUs, and the mem I got for $30, I ended up making an offer and uh, getting... 32 gigs of RAM for $30, which was a great deal. This was um, DDR3, registered DDR3 ECC RAM. And for the motherboard, I got a Supermicro X8DL 1.3. The 1.3 is the uh, revision. I got for, I made an offer and ended up getting it for $55. So... I got three gigabit Cat5 uh, patch panel that I will be using. So I won't need three of them, of course. I don't even have that many ports. I just need one, but I couldn't resist uh, the price of $30 for three since most of them are going for like 40 for just one. So I went ahead and picked these up. That's it for just going over the main components. Alright, to start off with the routers, since there are four, my ISPs provided modem and routers, and I will be disabling the not only the Wi-Fi, but the uh, DHCP servers and the uh, NAT for um, each of these. This is the TP-Link uh, load balancing router. I have this router plugged in right here and this one over there plugged in here and this is being used to combine in a way I'm not going to get technical with it I understand as I said previously what the load balancing router actually does this is being used as I said as a, an access point and the main router um, and this is the Nortel switch I showed y'all I uh, <clears throat> have yet to configure it since I do not have a null cable 
but this is the server that I'm running. This is a uh, Unraid based system. We'll be using for virtual, not only virtualization, but I have Plex running on it. Right now, I just have uh, two three terabyte drives, but I am plan to uh, uh, upgrade that in terms of storage. It is a i3 right now and it's got uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM. And uh, Unraid, as I have noticed, just does not really use much of any RAM. Uh, I originally built this for free NAS, but I could not, for the life of me, get free NAS to work. There were too many errors and I did not quite understand nor have I had the time to deal with it and Unraid is more of a polished solution at least from what I, for what I'm using it for to also to get onto the box this is a Rosewell case I do not know the precise model it is a i3 4130 with a Z87 MSI board so not that bad. Now I use server kind of loosely. I do not understand the quite exact what is the difference between a server and uh, everything like that in terms of naming scheme. So to me a server is anything that does more than just file serving. To get over to the more interesting stuff at hand, this is the... Um, RAM I got. This is just Hynix uh, 4 gig modules. And these were just uh, from a HP server from seeing this tag. So this is 4 gig modules, uh, 1333 megahertz a piece. I will show you the motherboard, but I won't be able to use all this RAM at uh, one time. Uh, the motherboard that I have is triple channel. And it only it, there can only be six RAM modules, and I did not want to pay for eight gig modules, especially because of how cheap these were for thirty thirty dollars for thirty two gigs. So I'll only be able to use twenty four gigs of the RAM in the actual server. Now to get on with the CPU, I'll just pull out one of these Intel Xeon uh, E five six forty five. Um, these were made in 09. They're older chips, but they're 6 core, 2.4 gigahertz, as I previously mentioned, and I have two of them. To me, they're a very better, much better value than the uh, Sandy Bridge CPUs that people are raving about right now, which are the uh, Xeon E5 2670s. Uh, these are a better value to me. Um, for the reason if you get two of them especially, just I can't beat the value. Because uh, they will, both of these will outperform that one of those Xeons for a much lower price. Since one of the Xeons is uh, uh, about $100 from what I've seen. And a motherboard to cover them is around at least... From what I've seen, around like 150, even used. Uh, it, you you might find varies, but in U.S. currency, I've found nothing can beat the price to performance of these chips. And to go ahead and get on the motherboard, I won't pull it out because uh, this is more sensitive to uh, static electricity. Regular CPUs. Well, not CPUs, but motherboards, since it is older gear. It doesn't have all the static protection built in. So when you're handling stuff like this, I do recommend static protection. So that goes down the new parts for this server right here. And I will be doing, especially if enough people want me to, a video on me upgrading it and everything. But uh, that's just kind of a performance overview. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all the plans for it and kind of get y'all tuned in for what I have coming. Just to uh, start with the server, like I said, I will be up upgrading it soon. And then... Uh, I have a closet right 
back there. I'm not going to show you all that right now. It was probably really blurry. But uh, down that hallway there is a, uh, well, a little walkway. There's a little, there's a closet that I will be putting everything in since this stuff is really noisy. Um, sorry, it's just hard to figure out how to hold this camera since I don't have the tripod out. Um, but anyway, I will be putting all the gear in that closet and I will start wiring. I, uh, I have somewhere to run up under the house. Since this is the older portion of the house, I actually can go under the house and that's how I will be right, uh, wiring a bunch more ethernet switches, ethernet ports, not switches, into not only this room, uh, for the home theater setup I have in my room. If you didn't see that, you can go ahead and, uh, go check out the other video I have linked in the description if you haven't already. But, uh, I'm not gonna go over that. But I have several ports that I will be, uh, putting in that room for the TV, the Steam Link, and my laptop it when I need it. And then for the server will also be going into the closet and I will be putting ethernet uh, ports, wall ports uh, all over in my room. I will be putting them all over the house as well so I'll be doing a video if requested on like how to wire up a home. Um, you, you may not be able to go actually under your house but how to wire in the uh, actual ports into that um, patch panel that I got. So I have a lot coming and I'll try to go over if people want since there really aren't a lot of videos because I checked on that load balancing router and kind of some of the features. Now I'm not super advanced on how to use it and everything but I do know most of the more basic stuff so I can at least show y'all some decent pointers at least on setting it up because when I got it uh, the internet just quit working it was an IP confliction and I can go ahead and show y'all how to change that and how to actually get it to work because the internet went down when it got plugged in it was just kind of stupid but uh it's it's actually it says business solution so so it's uh it doesn't have some of the smarter features found on more modern routers like changing its ip address but um i will if requested i'll do a video on that um i'll try to get more in depth with my switch since it is managed and I still have to wait for that cable to come in and uh, other than uh, moving the server and moving all the equipment into the other room and then wiring the house I think that's actually about it for the network as well as upgrading the uh, server now I will if requested as well do some more in-depth videos on Unraid, like how to set it up and everything. These things just take some time, so they have to be requested enough for me to actually want to do them. Well, not want, but have a reason to do them. So, uh, just if you actually want them, go ahead and leave a comment below and that'll kind of help me know what the uh, need for the video is um so i actually think that's about it other than all the wire management that will be going into it as you could see the wire management was terrible but since it all be moved um moved anyway pretty soon i will not be trying to manage anything until i move it uh but i think that's it so um if you like the video and uh, if you like the video go ahead and like it if you disliked it go ahead and dislike it 
If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for more videos that you want to see, go ahead and leave those in the description below. Also, liking the video actually helps my video go up in ranks and kind of helps me get it, the video get to more people, especially if suggestions, if people need it and everything. So, liking the video helps a lot. Um, but, uh, just thank you for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Try to get this stuff, uh, go ahead and moving along, and the server video of me rebuilding it, and probably configuring software will be coming really soon, since I like to do that to, well, not for y'all, but in my terms, in a, a day or two, so... That video will be coming soon, and I have a lot more coming. I'm sorry for the lack of content. As I said in the previous video, I've been busy. I've had stuff to do. And I'd like to ho hopefully keep content rolling out at at least two videos per month. But I'd really like to do a video or more a week. So, um, just to recap. So, anyway, thank y'all for watching. I'll catch you on the next video. Have a great day.